Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you some more paint comparisons. I'm gonna be taking name brand paints and putting them head to head with some bargain brand paints. So if you wanna see how these paints perform in a head to head competition, just keep watching. If you are new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher, and you will find me on here making over pieces of furniture or doing paint comparisons like this. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that before you leave. You guys went crazy for my last paint comparison where I compared Annie Sloan and Waverly Chalk. So I grabbed a bunch more colors in Waverly Chalk and I got a new one, Rust-Oleum Chalked, that you guys have been asking me lots of questions about and I keep saying I haven't tried it. So today I'm finally gonna be trying it. I'm gonna be stacking those paints against a bunch of name brand paint that you guys see me use on my channel and just see how the colors vary and how they perform. I'm gonna be using clear coat, top coats, and some waxes. I'm gonna break this down into colors down in the time stamp so if there's a specific paint or color you're wanting to see you can jump straight to that one i'm sure this is going to be really chatty like my last one so let's zoom in and start comparing these paints i'm going to be using a piece of furniture to demo these paints today i like doing that instead of just using boards to give you an idea of what they're going to look like on a piece of furniture I'm gonna use shellac to seal this piece because I have previously stripped off the varnish and chalk paint for another video that I did about can you remove chalk paint. So I'm just putting the shellac on so that it's gonna seal the piece and it's gonna act like a regular piece of furniture that you would have in your house. Shellac is also a great thing to have on hand because it will stop bleed through and seal in odors of any furniture piece you have. So here are all the brands I'm gonna be using today. I have three colors of Waverly Chalk and I'm gonna be trying out Rust-Oleum Chalked for the first time. I'm gonna be pitting it against Annie Sloan, Jolie, and Dixie Belle, all paints that you've seen on my channel before. I also have a bunch of different top coats to try out today from Rust-Oleum and Waverly. And then we're going to be using Jolie and Annie Sloan Wax and the Dixie Belle Clear Coat. First up is the Battle of the Grays. I'm going to be using Waverly Chalk in Elephant versus Dixie Belle in Hurricane Gray. And to make things fair, I'm going to be using the same brush for every single paint. So I'm going to be using my Zebra Palm Pro today. It's going to give a smooth finish for every paint. And I am going to be watering down every single paint. You guys came for me last time in the last video that I did this, but I water down all of my paint basically, unless I'm going for a really textured look. This does not affect its performance. It's actually just going to help it go on smoother. My goal in this video is not to persuade you to buy a specific paint or to dub a winner over the other. I just wanna show you side-by-side -side comparison so you can make the best decision for what paint you wanna buy that fits your budget the best that you feel comfortable with. So I'm not gonna be dragging anybody or singing anybody's praises. I'm just gonna be painting, giving my opinion, but you can take it or leave it. So this is Waverly Chalk in Elephant. Again, I have used this paint before in videos and I've become a big fan of it. I like the way that it goes on. It performs well. It is an acrylic based paint, but it does give you that matte finish like a chalk paint. On the other side, we are putting this up against Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray, which I love. I've used before on my son's bunk beds. It's a really beautiful, rich gray color and it has great coverage. And just to remind you, I'm going for a smooth look on all these. So I'm using this synthetic zebra brush and I am keeping my brush strokes going in the same direction. And by the way, since I'm painting with the zebra brush, I wanted to tell you guys that me and my good friend Katja were on the zebra before and after podcast this week talking about YouTube. And um, I hope you guys go check it out. I'll link it in the description box. So I'm going to go through all the different colors that I have, paint those sections on, and then we'll come back when they're dry to compare them a little bit more after that first coat. So next up, I'm going to do Waverly Ink versus Jolie Noir. So something I want to note is how thick this Waverly chalk is. And this is a big reason why I water it down. I know in the last video, people did not like that. But like I said, I water down all my paint. So I'm going to say that a couple of times as I'm doing this. There's nothing wrong with how thick it is. It's just very different from paints that I'm used to working with. One thing I am super impressed with this ink color is just how pigmented and truly black it is going on. Most blacks that you work with, they kind of go on blue and then dry down black, but this almost looks like ink. I can see why they name it ink. 
I was also really impressed by the coverage. It really seemed to just kind of melt into the piece and I couldn't see any wood. I think one coat would be enough with this color, but in the same token, it's so pigmented, it stained my hand. So I would be super careful with this color because if you get it on anything besides your piece of furniture, it is definitely going to stain whatever you're working with. Next up is Jolie Noir. Again, I'm watering it down. And I've used this color on several pieces. I used it on my nightstand that I did recently and on my son's desk. And this does go on very blue, but it dries down to a beautiful black. I know it performs well, and I know it's going to hold up because I have it in my home. And it's also a good option if you're wanting to mix colors because I have used it with a blue before to create a really rich navy. I think if you mixed the ink, it would just get really muddy and dark because of how black and pigmented it is. Um, but this definitely does not have the same coverage as the Waverly. I know I'm going to need at least two coats on this color to get it to the same coverage as the Waverly. Next up are the Battle of the Whites. I have Rust-Oleum Chalked in Linen White and Jolie in Palace White. This is my first time working with this paint. Um, it does have a very strong odor, just like Waverly. Waverly has a very strong paint odor, but this one is a lot smoother than Waverly. It does go on really thick. Um, so I was seeing a lot of brush strokes, but the coverage is amazing because of how thick it is. It adhered really well, just like a chalk paint, but I honestly think it performs a little bit more like a latex than a chalk paint. And sometimes with these paints, the brush strokes can level out as they dry. So we'll just see what the second and third coat look like on here. With white, you are gonna have to do probably three coats, sometimes four. So I do recommend if you are doing white and going for a smooth finish and you don't wanna see any of that wood underneath, using a primer or a cover stain is always a good idea just cause you're gonna save paint in the long run. Okay, next up is Jolie Palace White. This is a pretty close to a pure white, but just has a little bit of a tint to it. So it's not that pure white. I use this on my shiplap uh, video over my fireplace. If you guys have seen that one again, the coverage is pretty similar to the Rust-Oleum. The Rust-Oleum might have just a little bit better coverage on that first coat, but the Jolie is definitely smoother and has more of that matte appearance compared to the Rust-Oleum. Okay, lastly, I'm going to compare Waverly Pool versus Annie Sloan chalk paint in duck egg blue. So this is the Battle of the Blues. They're very toned differently, but I wanted to be able to use the Annie Sloan paint again because I know so many people ask me questions about it. So this is the pool. Again, it's very chunky, just like the ink was and just like the elephant. I really liked the color going on wet, but as it dried down, it got a lot brighter and I wasn't as big of a fan of it. And it got more opaque the more it dried down, which I'll show you when I go through all the different colors after they're dry. But going on, I had no issues with it and it was smooth, performing just like the other colors. So on to Annie Sloan Duck Egg Blue. Again, you can see it's a lot smoother than the Waverly just by looking at it. This performed super well. I couldn't believe just... This was the best coat, single coat, besides the Waverly ink, which I was really shocked by because I've used this color a lot. And this is one of my favorite colors, so I'm trying not to be biased about this specific paint, but I am just, I'm a fan of Duck Egg Blue. I have lots of love for it. I've done lots of pieces in it, and I have it as an accent piece around my home. But the coverage was amazing on just a single coat of this color. So here is what all the first coats looked like dried down. The elephant is looking a little streaky compared to the Dixie Bell, but it has better coverage. Uh, with the blacks, the Waverly definitely has better coverage than the Jolie after that first coat. But you can see the Jolie actually dried down very black and it does not look blue anymore. The whites are looking very similar in coverage. Like I said, we're probably gonna have to pile on two or three coats. And then now that this dried down, you can see the big difference. The pool does not cover as well as the Annie Sloan. But I'm just going back in and I'm just gonna do two coats on everything with the exception. I'm gonna do three coats on the white just so you can get a better idea of what those are gonna look like. So I will show you all of these once they dry down on that second coat, and then we're gonna start adding different top coats and comparing those. 
Okay, the second coat on the grays are looking good. I actually don't see the streaking as much on that elephant, so I'm happy with that. The blacks both look great. Again, that Waverly looks a little bit deeper to me than the Jolie. This is the white after three coats and not a big difference between the two. They're looking pretty similar. And then we have the blues again, even after two coats. I'm not super happy with the pool. I think you would need to add a third coat, but I'm trying to do apples to apples here. So I'm just going to see how this looks when I top coat it. Okay, for the top coats, I'm going to be testing out a lot of different things on these paints, so try to keep up. I am going to be using this Dixie Belle brush anytime I use in a synthetic brush. This is the Dixie Belle mini angle, and I'm also going to be using a foam brush. So the first one that I am putting on is the Waverly Matte Varnish. I've used this before on the white. I used this in my last comparison video, and I really liked it but I don't like it on top of this gray for some reason. It was pulling the paint up. It looked really streaky going on and it only got worse as it dried down. So pretty quickly, I grabbed the foam brush just to compare the two to see if that went on a little better. And I think it is, you're, it's easier to get this on smoother with this foam brush, but again, it's like lifting up the paint and it re-wets the paint and just not not a super big fan it's really thick like i said before i didn't have that many issues like this on white paint so maybe it's just this particular paint i'm not a fan of so since i didn't like the way this was going i wanted to see how the dixie bell top coat was going to perform on this paint so i cleaned that brush off and grabbed some of the clear coat I found recently that using this top coat with a damp brush helps it perform even better. So I am just putting this on like I normally do, brush strokes growing in the same direction that I painted on for that smooth look. And this was going on a lot better. I know it looks white, but I know how this stuff dries down. It dries down very level and very clear. So I was just hoping that this was gonna look a lot better than the way the Waverly section was going. And I noticed that it did not lift the paint. So I'm thinking that was a Waverly top coat issue and not the brushes that I was using or a paint issue. And then I went ahead and just applied this to my Dixie Belle side. And like I said, I like to just keep this in smooth strokes. Don't overwork it too much. It is very white as it goes on, especially on a dark color like this, but it dries down completely flat and it levels out a little bit as it dries as well. So here's the Battle of the Grays once they dried down. As you can see, that Waverly just got really streaky over this color. Um, just doesn't look very good. I do like the Dixie Belle on it, which is that stripe right down in the middle. That actually looks really great and is not streaky at all. And then the Dixie Belle on top of the Hurricane Cray looks beautiful. Let's move over to the black. I'm going to be using a lot of different top coats, so pay attention. We're starting with the Waverly Matte Varnish. And again, this was lifting off the paint just like it did with the gray. But it wasn't looking as streaky. Next up, I tried the Waverly Wax, which is very runny, and I'm just using a lint-free cloth to apply that. I was seeing some little white fuzzies as I put this on and buffed it off with a clear section. So I decided to try a shop towel as well. I've seen some people use those before and that seemed to be working a little bit better. I did see some blue bits in there, but not as much as the white. So I was a little happier with that. This wax was pulling up the paint too, just like it did with the varnish. I'm gonna be using Jolie wax to seal the Jolie paint. They do have a varnish now, but I don't have any, and I would like to try it out, so maybe in a future video. I'm just applying this the same way I applied the Waverly wax using a lint-free cloth to put it on and then buffing it off with a clear section of my towel. And I also wanted to try out the shop towels versus the lint-free rags, and those worked really well. Just to add another top coat in there, I wanted to see what the Dixie Belle clear coat looked like over both of these paints. So here are all the top coats dried down. Black is pretty difficult to film, but I think you can see the difference here. I think they all turned out pretty good. It just depends on what look you're going for. I like the Jolie side the best because I like the way their wax looks. That's just a personal preference. I think that the Waverly varnish is a little bit too shiny for me, but it dried down smooth and doesn't look streaky like it did on the gray. And I actually really liked the way the Dixie Belle looks on both of these paints. It looked really great on the Jolie and on the Waverly, it looked just a little bit streaky. So I don't know that might not transfer well to a whole piece. 
Okay, onto the whites. I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Top Coat on top of the Rust-Oleum Paint. Uh, you may notice I'm not painting on the top of the table. I lost that footage, but luckily I had more white paint on the back of here. So that's what I'm using to show you guys the top coat. So I'm just applying this with that Dixie Bell brush again. And I actually really liked the way this went on. It was not as thick as the Waverly. It reminded me a lot of the Dixie Bell. It smells similar um, and it went on really similar. So I was pretty impressed with this one by my first impression. And then I just rinsed my brush off and applied Dixie Belle on top of my Jolie paint since I don't have the Jolie varnish. And again, there weren't any really big issues putting this on. It performed very similar over this paint as it did over the Dixie Belle paint. So here are the whites dry and side by side, they look very similar. I think the Jolie, you can't really tell <laughs> over camera, but the Jolie does have less brush strokes because that Rust-Oleum is thicker. So the Rust-Oleum is going to give you better coverage, but you are going to see more brush strokes. But both of these top coats dried down flat and very smooth and did not leak streaks. So I was happy with both of them. I will say that I found that white is the most forgiving with any top coat. So I would definitely like to try these over more. More colors. Last up is the blues. I'm starting with the Waverly varnish and I grabbed the wrong foam brush that had black paint on it. So I grabbed a clean one and applied that. And then I also put the wax on the bottom section of this one. That's the Waverly wax. And then on the Annie Sloan side, I grabbed some Annie Sloan wax and did that on the top, which it really deepened up the color a lot more than any of the other top coat products. And then just for fun, I took the Dixie Belle clear coat again and wanted to see what that was going to look like on the bottom portion. Okay, so here they are dry. The top coats performed pretty well, the Waverly top coats over the pool. Um, I think those do better with lighter colors, so you're gonna be safer using those on lighter colors. This color had the least coverage out of all the Waverly colors. I think you would need three, maybe four coats to completely cover your piece with the specific color. On the other side, the Annie Sloan coverage with that paint was really great. The wax looks beautiful with it. It deepened it a little bit, um, but the Dixie Belle clear coat also performed really well, but it did not darken the color as much. It just gave a beautiful finish, not streaky. Um, so I think you could use either one of those with this paint. Okay, I know that was a lot of info. Hopefully you can go back and rewatch the sections that you really want to learn about. I also created a really handy cheat sheet for you guys that I'm gonna link down below. It has all the paints listed out and all the top coats, how much they cost, how much comes in them, and then what the cost is per ounce, just so you can look at that all in one place and make a decision which paint's gonna work best for you. Thank you guys for joining me for this paint comparison today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Everybody was really opinionated last time and I love to hear all of them. <laughs> if there's a specific paint that you wanna see me cover in a future video, let me know. I'll be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. I will be back week. I will be back week. I will be back week. Open up some paint and start painting. <laughs> Let's open up the paint. <laughs> she ran upstairs. <gasps> oh no. Wow. Holla. <laughs> Looking smoking.